Should I make my own climbing holds or should I buy climbing holds? This is a question that I've been getting a lot recently. I've also been seeing a lot of interest in how to make money. Now I know as a climber, this is something that we get passionate about and we get brought into this world and we wanna stay in that world. And whenever we have a passion that just kind of envelops our life, we wanna find ways to make a living in that. And back in the late 90s, I tried to do just that by making climbing holds. I started out making climbing holds just for myself in thinking that I was saving myself some money and that might be where you're at. And I took that passion and tried to go to a business with it. It was in the late 90s, early 2000s. It was a really hard time for people jumping into the climbing hold industry because there wasn't a whole lot of climbing gyms. There weren't a whole lot of home walls, but there were a lot of people making climbing holds. So in today's market, I think it's gonna be a little bit easier to jump into the climbing hold market, but there is kind of this balance that you need to do where volume is key. You must create a lot of volume to make it worth it. Now, if you're doing it for yourself as a hobby, that's cool. Just know that it's probably not gonna save you very much money. For example, I've got this, these two boxes here. This is what you need for making a climbing hold along with this piece of foam. It is a floral foam that you would carve down and make your shape. Now these two things together by themselves is about $60. And with this set, as far as the resin goes, I might be able to make these two holds. I'm starting to sell climbing holds over at climberdad.com. This one specifically is up there. It's a pretty nice shape. The guy's name in the middle is Jim. Awesome hold, 40 bucks. And since I have a bunch of uh, chalk left over from the gym for the month of October, I will be throwing in an extra bag of chalk with these just for you from this time out. I will also be signing the backs of every single hold and what number it is that's manufactured. I'm only gonna make 100 of these. Once 100 is done, it's done. I'm never gonna make them again. So jump over there, check it out. Now, what can you get for $60 if you buy some holds? So let's go over. I'm gonna go over to escapeclimbing.com. We're here and I am going to throw in, this is mostly based on price here, but I do like these, these holds. It's the Legacy Comfy Edge One and the Legacy Micro Jug. These are fairly small holds, but I think that they would work good on a home climbing wall. So I'll punch those in and I'm going to apply the discount code CLIMBERDAD2020 and that is $60.48. That is 13 climbing holds. So, you know, if you're gonna get into making climbing holds for a hobby, it's good. If you're gonna get into it for making money, know that you gotta do volume. So, or do something unique. Now there's some other ways that you can do to make money. And I've shot this video here to just kind of show you guys what I'm doing to make money to survive. And some of it does not involve climbing at all. So in fact, most of it doesn't. But if you wait till the very end of the movie, I'm gonna start talking about more of those things that you can do to help make money.
So right now I'm replacing these concrete steps at an apartment building. And what I do is I cut out this old rusty bracket that's just fallen apart. I clean up the surface that's on the rails here, or not these rails, but these rails down here. I'll weld on a new bracket and then replace this concrete step. For each step I do is about $50 for what I'm getting paid. Now, I think that that's pretty good money, but there is a lot of setup that's involved. So it could be a lot of money or it could not be a lot of money. It just depends on how fast you're moving. I think it might be time to put the camera away and get to work. Wow, what a day. It's not over yet, but it is 7.10 p.m. I left my house at 7.20 a.m. So I have been doing this welding job for almost 12 hours if you count my commuting, which I think that that's important. That's a part of the time that you have sacrificed that day for that type of work. I'm almost home and I just want to crash. I just want to go home and crash, but I know I can't. I have at least seven really important reasons at home waiting for me that says I cannot crash. Plus, there is still a lot of work to be done today. Let's keep on going. Check some email here, make sure I'm all up to date. All right, I'm there. I need to uh, call it a night. Let me know down in the comments below what you think about this video, and I will see you next time right here on Climber Dad. Okay, as promised, I'm gonna tie this all back together to show you how you can make money while you're staying connected to that climbing lifestyle. And just so you know, those eggs at the very end that I drank raw, they are farm fresh eggs right from my backyard. Now back onto topic. The reason why I wanted to show you that trade of welding where I'm going through and I'm working hard and tying that into the climbing lifestyle is because a lot of times we need to pick those trades that will allow us to dedicate time towards the climbing that we want to do that we want to achieve and most of the time trades allow us to do that uh, there's a lot of carpenters or there used to be a lot of carpenters when I was a younger fellow um, also painters that's a big thing uh, Chris Hampton is a pretty uh, famous example of that he used to be a painter before he started the podcast and got that going to where he could take off with that and go full-time with that now let's get a little bit closer to home into the climbing world, and that's the climbing gym industry. You can enter into the climbing gym industry through just staff, route setters at the climbing gym. You can make climbing holds and volumes specifically for climbing gyms. Uh, you can become a wall builder as well, or work for a wall building company. Now let's throw this in here, pro climber. And how the pro climber makes money is they inspire others to climb and they inspire others to buy products for the companies that are sponsoring those pro climbers. Now, there's a more simple way to do that, although it may not be quite as effective. It could be really hard and I'm seeing a lot of pro climbers combining these two things together now, which is YouTube and podcasts. So as a YouTuber, there's different ways that you can 
make money. You have your ad revenue commissions. So there's affiliate marketing. You can get an Amazon affiliate marketing and there's other commissions that you can approach smaller companies like I have approached Escape Climbing and they have given me a discount code to give to you guys I've already talked about. That gives me a small commission as well when you guys shop there. Merchandise. Merchandise like this t-shirt that I'm wearing here. This is for sale at ClimberDad.com. You can go over there and buy some of these things that I have. That's a bigger part for that YouTube area on how to make an income. The last thing is to be a producer, more like a boutique style producer than what you would want if you were supporting a climbing gym or the climbing gym industry. The smaller boutique stuff is what you see on Etsy, these very specific chalk bags that are made, uh, climbing holds. I think I actually with these climbing holds right here, it's going to be more into that boutique um, style of product because they're going to be unique. I really do hope that you've enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe if you haven't already, share this with your friends, and I will see you next time right here on Climber Dad. Yeah!